Hello and welcome to Droix. Today we are checking out the brand new GPD Win3 Gaming Handheld. We will be unboxing it, taking a look at the features, specifications and benchmark results and wrapping it up with playing some games and emulators. Let's start off with the unboxing. Inside is the GPD Win3, which we will show in more detail shortly. Underneath is a screen protector and wipe, which you can apply to the screen to protect it. There is a quick start guide, which is in full English. Also, check out our website knowledge base and forums if you have any questions or to check out some useful guides. Next, we have a power supply for the GPD Win3. We will include the correct adapter for your country. And finally, there is a USB cable for charging your Win3. As an introductory bonus, Droix customers will also receive a free GPD Win3 docking station and carry case. Please do check the website for availability as there is limited stock. We will take a closer look at the docking station features a little later in the video. The GPD Win3 is available in two colours, silver and space grey. Other than the colour, there is no difference in specifications or features. The GPD Win3 features a HIPS 5.5 inch 1280x720 4 point touchscreen display. It also has a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for great protection from scuffs. There are two clickable analog sticks made by Alps. They are very comfortable and offer pixel precise movement. In addition, there is a D-pad which is excellent for retro gaming. Below the D-pad you can find select and start buttons as well as the charge and power LEDs. On the right there are four gaming buttons which handily have both Xbox and PlayStation symbols which if like myself helps if you often forget the layout of both. Towards the bottom is a fingerprint sensor for easy logging into Windows. And finally there is an Xbox style guide button which could be used for bringing up the Xbox game bar found in Windows 10. The Win3 measures approximately 7.8 by 3.6 by 1 inches in size and weighs 550 grams. On the left side of the handheld you can find a micro SD card slot and a switch that allows you to change between joystick and mouse input. On the back you can find two additional buttons which can be configured via the included software to perform a custom input. So for example you could set a button to be the M keyboard key to display a map in a game. On the top of the Win3 are very comfortable left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There are power, volume up and down buttons and a 3.5mm headphone port. Finally, there is a USB 3 port which you can connect peripherals to. On the bottom is a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 compatible port which a charger, docking station or Thunderbolt 4 devices can connect to. GPD have moved from the traditional clamshell design to bring a new slidable screen to reveal the keyboard. It is touch sensitive and has a backlight so you will be able to see the keys in the dark. The touchscreen still works when the screen is up and can be easily pushed back down when the keyboard is not required. The docking station is a very useful accessory for the GPD Win3. On the back you can find a USB Type-C port, HDMI port, three USB 3 ports and an Ethernet port. This gives you a great solution to expand the number of USB ports as well as offering HDMI output to a monitor or TV. Not only is this great as a handheld, but with a keyboard and mouse you can transform the Win3 into a high-end desktop solution. It's ideal for working anywhere where there is a monitor to connect to. 
The GBD Win Series is now in its third iteration and taking a look back over the previous two you can see the great improvements in design, features and specifications. The GBD Win 1 launched in 2016 and featured an Intel Atom X7 processor with Intel 405 graphics. It had 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. This was fine for Windows 10 and it could run lower end requirement window games and emulators. The GPD Win 2 launched two years later with a faster Intel Core M3 processor and Intel 615 graphics. The RAM was increased to 8 gigs and the upgradable M.2 storage was available from 128 gig upwards. The improvements and specifications meant a larger number of high-end games could be run. The GPD Win3 again continues with the improvements to specifications and features, so let's take a closer look at them. There are two models of Win3 available. The first is an Intel i5-1135G7 quad-core processor with 8 threads running up to 4.2GHz in turbo mode. The second is the Intel Core i7-1165G7 quad-core processor which also has 8 threads running up to 4.7GHz in turbo mode. The graphics are powered with the Iris XE graphics running up to 1.3GHz, supporting DirectX 12.1 and multi-monitor display. You can if you wish to use an external eGraphics card via the Thunderbolt 4 USB port. There is 16GB of LPDDR4X 4266 RAM for excellent performance. As standard, there is 1TB of NVMe PCIe Gen 4 storage. This can be upgraded to a larger storage if you wish to. The Win3 is powered with three 3950 mAh batteries, providing many hours of power depending on usage. The Win3 comes with Windows 10 Home Edition that is fully licensed with all of the latest updates available to install as and when available. Windows can be fully navigated via the touchscreen in tablet style or you can use the switch located on the left side to switch between joystick input and mouse input. You can then use the analog stick and left and right shoulder buttons as their respective mouse buttons. Let's now test the performance of the GBD Win3 with some benchmarks. We start with PCMark which tests the overall performance of the Win3 in a variety of scenarios ranging from desktop performance, video conferencing, office apps and of course 2D and 3D performance. The GBD Win3 scores an excellent 5037, putting it in the range of the higher end mains powered AMD Ryzen mini PCs. With this handheld, you could do everything from general day to day browsing right up to photo and video editing. As the Win3 is primarily a gaming handheld, we can test the 3D performance with 3D Mark. This tests in more detail the processor and 3D graphics. The final score of 1791 is excellent, beating the higher end mobile AMD Ryzen processors. It's no surprise as the 12th gen Intel Iris is very powerful and great for both 2D and 3D graphics. Next we will check the internal NVMe storage with Diskmark. Having a fast internal storage is important as you have fast windows booting up right up to faster loading speeds in games. Here we can see the great speeds for both reading and writing with averages of around 1800 meg a second each. We will now check out some high end games starting with the recently released Crash Bandicoot 4. With the suggested settings it both plays and looks great. You can if you wish to change a couple of basic settings to increase the quality and keep a good frame rate.
Although Forza Horizon 4, when first booting, does suggest that the performance is too low on this device to run the game, you can safely ignore the warnings as it runs just fine. The standard settings will run the game at 60 frames per second with no issues. If you go into the graphic settings, you can increase them while still keeping above 60 frames per second in the majority of environments. The game looks amazing on the screen and blows away just about every other racing game on handheld. Grand Theft Auto 5 will run just fine at the recommended settings. Again, you can go into the settings and increase the graphics quality for better visuals while still keeping the frame rate high. Like Forza, there are plenty of settings to get the best visual versus performance to your preference. And we will finish off with some emulators for which the GPD is very good at. For 8 and 16 bit systems, you will have perfect performance with software such as RetroArch. This also extends to systems such as Dreamcast and PlayStation 1, so we won't spend too much time checking those out. Instead, we will go straight to the higher end systems which struggle on older handhelds. PlayStation 2 emulation is pretty much perfect in terms of performance. We are using the emulator PCSX2 and providing the game is supported then you should have no issues at all playing them. I tried a number of games and they all run fine with no slowdown. It's great to finally play PlayStation 2 on a handheld. The original Xbox also plays games very well, but again the emulator itself is still in progress and as such not all games are supported. For the games that are, they all played very well. Mashed is one of my favourite Xbox games and it plays it perfectly. PlayStation Portable has no issues with the Win3 you can quite happily ramp up the graphics settings for improved visuals with little to no impact on performance. Older handhelds struggle with God of War but on the Win3 it ran fine and even when I ramped up the settings it pretty much stayed at 60 FPS with some minor frame dips now and again. I'll finish up the emulators with PlayStation 3 emulation. Again, this emulator is very much work in progress and as such not all games are supported. Like most recent systems, the emulator requires shader caches, so first playthroughs will be slower as the caches are generated. Once they are generated, you can see there is very good performance and games are quite playable. Now, if I was good at skateboard games, I would have done a few tricks, but I'm useless at them, so you'll have to watch me skate around instead. That wraps up this overview of the GPD Win 3. I have to say that the improvements in both design and performance over the Win 2 are excellent. High-end games and emulators perform far better and the difference between the Win 2 and 3 are big enough to make me retire my Win 2 and enjoy games as they are meant to be played on the Win 3. You can find out more about the GPD Win 3 on the products link or in the description. You can keep up to date with our latest videos by clicking the subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.